at the end of the day, like all you have are relationships in this world, in this life, and no one really cares about like how fast you are, how well you do at a race. It's like, are you a kind person? Or like, can you like sit down and have a conversation with somebody or like be humble and be intelligent and calculated and kind? Are you picking up Mr. Cowboy? Oh, is it? Gosh, sorry, I'm just yelling. Just in. <laughs> yeah, literally, I cool. And then they'll be looking at Ansel the whole time. Okay. Hang on, do you want to come sit? Good boy. Does that screw you guys up? Am I looking at you? Okay. Yeah, so I got into cycling um, when I decided to go to Fort Lewis College. So it was kind of serendipitous in a way. Like, I knew I wanted to live in the mountains and be. Um, <clears throat> amongst mountain sports, I was like obsessed with ice climbing and climbing and I had never done any of that. And so cycling was like, yeah, I'll try it. And I just kind of found my group of friends. Um, I was really bad, <laughs> like really bad. That was where I met my friends and my group of people that I connected with. And I guess I just kind of got swept away in it all. <laughs> too much for her bad cornering and stuff like she was a bad mountain biker early on so I don't want to go there again <laughs> uh, my name is Chad Cheney and I am the Durango Devo co-founder and coach now and I do their social media so I'm kind of all in on the junior cycling program in town and then I'm also a coach of a Fort Lewis College yeah, I first met Sarah on the Fort Lewis cycling team because she was uh, going to school there and riding for the teams. And my first impression was she's just a little bundle of energy, a um, lot of questions, giggly, and knew it all the different kinds of cycling disciplines, but just wanted to be a part of that kind of scene and culture. Let's see, my cycling career, um, it's kind of two part. Like I started in college and I was always a lot stronger on the road, like just naturally. Um, but I never really like felt like I fit in with the scene. Like everyone was like really serious and like paid a lot of attention to gear and I don't know, all the things that I like wasn't naturally good at paying attention to. And then I remember like Dylan asking me if I was having fun and which sounds like a simple thing but like when you get swept up in everything the equipment the racing the locations the people you just forget that you're actually supposed to be enjoying yourself and my answer was like a pretty quick no i think she just got to the point where she was kind of burned on the whole thing um and so we just i was like all right well here's what you need to do like you should probably just quit racing for a little while and like only ride your bike if it's really something that you want to do. And it never had anything to do with money. Like I was never trying to make money or like make it. I just, you know, I think I was just trying to have a good time and I just got swept away. So when I realized that I really wasn't having a good time, I shifted my life and I put my focus into my career as a graphic designer. And um, I think that was really good. It was really important to do that and know what it felt like to like get to go ride my bike after work instead of like train. <laughs> the more I like dive into cycling, um, the more I realize that there's like this crazy overlap with like bikes and art and design and creativity um, and expression and adventure and like all of these new ways to be a creative thinker. And so that's been like probably <clears throat> probably the most exciting thing out of everything like I can kind of see how everything is overlapping and making it all more interesting and um, fun. <laughs> I 
Sarah has some crazy inner driving force that you wouldn't really understand just from having a conversation with her normally. You can really challenge yourself um, out here without a finish line, like no one cares if you finish, and that was like a pretty profound thing for me. It just looks like an oil painting or something. A, like really well done oil painting. There's something that like changes in your brain and you're just like, whoa! Like, it, I mean, if we were racing, the race doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> it's like where you are matters more. Cause like, look at it. This, you're like, wow, I am very small. <laughs> I think that's very small. I think that's what's cool about it because you don't really get that anymore. You feel very big because you have so much information in your palm and now it's like role reversal. You're like, nope, you're teeny. from the Devo girls and they said to check the front porch and they had made me a Norman with bread and raisins and then they said be careful of the toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> so here's his head, here's his little raisin eyes, and there's, and there's two toothpicks. <laughs> Like the happiest I see her and the most like fulfilled is when she's coaching the Devo girls. Like that is a huge thing for her. Um, I think she just always wanted and, and, and had, you know, great mentors growing up. Like our mom is freaking awesome. And like just being able to, yeah, give back to her, her community, I think is like what makes it like not seem like it's just, like she's just an athlete or it's just a sport, you know? Like it's a lot more meaning um, for her. Sarah has always been a mentor. She really like genuinely loves hanging out with the girls that she coaches in Devo. Yeah, it just kind of changes you, you know, like we've had a lot of superstars do big things like go to the Olympics or win this or that. And then they come back and coach with us. And we're like, what? That doesn't sound normal. Like it's not normal for superstars to kind of in their prime go like, yeah, I'll coach, you know, like Michael Jordan didn't like coach a basketball team in the off season, you know, it was all about him. So it's totally not normal, but it's like this new thing that people are realizing that just kind of clears your head and resets your training mind. And you just, you know, you give to someone else. So uh, yeah, to, to re-answer your question, I think it was, you know, in those questioning years of professional mountain biking when she started coaching and mentoring the young girls. And she's been doing it ever since. mentorship and leading um, is more important to me than like being inspirational like inspiration I was just thinking about this the other day like inspiration is is really important in this world but we have a lot of that and inspiration 
to me is like something from afar. Like you're seeing something in front of you and you're like, wow, that's amazing, or this person's amazing. And it seems really removed. Um, but leadership and mentorship is um, more valuable, I think, uh, to me, because it's hands-on, like you get to work with somebody, you get to ride next to them, you get to talk to them about the things in their life, and it's a lot more connected. And I think you can do a lot more in this world with leadership and mentorship than just being this like aspirational, inspirational caricature. <laughs> At the end of the day, like that all fades really quickly without any of this, without the lights and the finish lines and the media, like all you have are relationships in this world, in this life. And to me, like, I just, I mean, I've always really liked connecting with people and bikes have always been a way that I get to do that. Um, and that's, that's what I want to maintain. There's a lot of different ways to pick apart cycling um, and be the best. And I think you have to decide like, what the best means to you before you pick a path. And so once I define that and once like young people can figure out <laughs> like which way they want to go, hopefully more start choosing the multifaceted realm and seeing that you can make a career out of being a really decent bike racer, but also do all these other things. Um, I think that's going to be really exciting to see like what these young people do with this world. Hopefully they clean it up. <laughs>